So working with the vector packet, I'm just going to run through the different sections of this really pretty rapidly. So you'll probably want to, in fact, I guarantee, when I'm done talking about this section, pause this video and do these, sorry, do these down here, and then watch the next part of the video for the next part, and, but don't watch it all the way through and expect to remember everything. So with this, with just identifying which vector these are, don't let the point 3 here, for example, don't let that can throw you off. It's going to be pretty obvious what these are if you know the following. This is 0 degrees. So my pencil is like a vector pointed at 0 degrees that way. That means this direction, of course, hopefully, you recognize, is 90 degrees. Straight up. So this is 90. And then I would move another 90 to here. And this negative x-axis, we'd say, is at 180 degrees. And then if I add another 90, I'm going straight down, that is 270 degrees. And then I come back to 0 degrees. And when I do, I could also describe that as 360 degrees, that location. 0 degrees means I didn't go rotate at all. 360 means I rotated all the way around and got back to that. So keeping these in mind, any angle that is between 0 and 90 is going to be in here somewhere. So like C and B, I would expect them to have values that are between 0 and 90. Now, I would expect C to be much closer to 90 and B to be much closer to 0. So for example, look at angle. The problem one says, find me the vector that's at 81.3. Well, I know that's less than 90 degrees, but it's awfully close to 90. And the only vector in that region is vector C. So I don't need to go with a protractor and measure that angle. I can, maybe you'd like. If you've never used a protractor, that might be a little bit challenging. But I could throw down a protractor and take the, in this case, they're all different, by the way. So, But in this case, this one has a little hole down here. So I'm going to put that over the origin and line up these little lines here with the x-axis. And if I do that, uh, in the neighborhood of 80 degrees is C. So that's the closest one to that measure. But you don't need to do that. Like, for example, 2, 98.7 degrees, that's a little past 90. Well, there's only one vector that's a little past 90, and that's D. When it says 45 degrees in the third quadrant, well, this is quadrant 1, this is quadrant 2, this is quadrant 3, and this is quadrant 4. And 45 degrees is halfway between you know, 0 and 90. So it's, it's going to split this section, this quadrant, in half. So I would expect 45 in the third quadrant to be I. Now, what about 81.3 in the second quadrant? Hmm. That's going to be a little bit tricky. We're in the second quadrant now. When I give you an angle in a quadrant, that angle is always going to be to the x-axis, to this axis. So for example, 71.6 in the fourth quadrant, it's going to be in this quadrant down here, and the angle is going to go from here. So it's going to be 71.6, closer to 90, might look something like that. Just an estimate. But that is what 71.6 in the fourth quadrant. It is not, when I give you a quadrant, I'm not giving you this angle here to the y-axis. I'm giving you this one. So it's not this, it's this. So that's probably k, I'm guessing, by the way, right there. OK, next page. And by the way, I should have, you should have a copy, there we go, an extra copy of that diagram to detach so that you don't have to flip back and forth all the time. So I have detached mine, and I have it handy here as I look at these next parts. So 
The magnitude of, the, of a vector is described by the length of the arrow, period, end of story. So when they say the magnitude of vector A, I just have to count the blocks. One, two, three, four, about five blocks to the end of that arrow. So I might say five units, blocks, however I want to go. So that's no big deal. Which vector has the largest magnitude? It's the longest arrow. Which is the smallest? The shortest arrow. What's more interesting is B, but instead of doing B for you, I'm going to do F. I'm going to say, what if I need the magnitude of F? So what if I want, and by the way, we would write that. Since I'm handwriting it, I put a little arrow above it, and magnitude is indicated by these absolute value signs. So this is the magnitude of F. Well, if you look at F, I need the length of that arrow. To get it, I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem. I'm going to use this side, right here, the over part, and this side, the up part, over, up, to get the hypotenuse. So this, for example, is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 over. So when I look at that triangle, I'm going to draw it, I guess, up here. So the magnitude of F is going to be the hypotenuse. I know this is 8. I know this is, sorry, this right here is 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, Pythagorean theorem says this squared plus this squared equals this squared. Or, no, that means that the magnitude of that vector is squared, so that squared is equal to 8 squared plus 4 squared. I'm going to take the square root of both sides, so another way of looking at this is the magnitude of f is equal to the square root of 8 squared plus 4 squared, Pythagorean theorem. And I do that, and that will give me how long f is. So you're going to do a similar thing to find out b and h. That's why I say Pythagoras is your friend. Okay, try those. Now, moving on, adding vectors. So there, I want you to add vectors graphically. There's a couple ways we can do this. I'm going to do it both ways. So I'll do it once, and then I'll erase it, or maybe go in a different color, not sure. Um, so we're adding B and C. So one method says to draw the first vector, B. So that's, let's see, over 3. So if you look at B, it's the one that is over 3, 4, 5, over 6, up 2. So over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up 2. So it looks like this. So I draw B. There's vector B. And now I draw C, but I start it as if my origin is here, the tip. So I'm going to draw vector C, but I'm going to start here, not at the origin. So if I look at vector C, it goes from its tail, the end of it, and this is its tip. So from here I go 1, 2 over, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 up. So starting here, I do the same thing, 2 over, and then 13 up from here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And let's say I get a ruler. And so I draw. Notice I started, though, wherever B ended is where I start C. I call it tip to, tip to tail method. Now that I've done that, so here's B, and I'm adding it to C, and the end result is whatever I get. So this is where I started, this is where I ended, so I draw a line between them. And this is B plus vector B plus vector C, this one right here. Now, another way to do that one, he says. So remember, this is my final answer is right in there, right? Keep that in mind. Another way to do that is to start by drawing vector B. That's going to be over 6 up 2. So it's going to be this one. No big deal. It starts the same. There's vector B. And then draw vector C, just like you would see it here. So starting at the origin. So over 2 and then up 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 
and vector C would look like this. So draw the two vectors as they would appear. And then we're going to build a parallelogram. So in other words, let's do this from here. I want to draw a line all right, that is parallel to C. So I'm going to, now we can do this as a sketching technique here, but I'm going to turn my, until I feel like it's parallel. That looks about right. So I draw a line. This line here is parallel to C, but goes through the tip of B. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to draw a line that is parallel to B. I could do this with my ruler. I could then just move it up like that. So I have created a parallelogram here. And guess where my answer is? The addition of the two is from, and by the way, it's from here to the opposite corner. Notice we're going to be right where we were before. So there's two ways to do it. I tend to like, if I'm just going to sketch it quickly, I like the parallelogram method. Now, it doesn't have to be perfectly a perfect parallelogram, but it's not bad. Uh, and that gives us B plus C in another way. But either way will work, tip to tail or parallelogram method. And so you'll have enough information to do the addition ones. Opposite of a vector. It's key to note that the opposite of a vector, not only is it in the exact opposite direction, 180 degrees off, added or subtracted, depends, it has to have the same magnitude. So for example, if you look at your diagram and we're looking for opposites, I wouldn't say that, I think this is L, that L and E are opposites. They are in opposite directions, but they're not the same size. E is a larger magnitude than L, so they're not exact opposites. I can see two pairs in there that I w could call opposites. I'll let you decide which ones are the exact opposite direction, but, um, and I should say, the same size, the same magnitude. On the graph below, I want you to draw the opposite of A, and the opposite of C, and so forth. Let's do the opposite of C. Um, or maybe I should do E, because it's, no, E is huge. So I'll go K. All right, let's pick one that's not on that list. Let's do the opposite of B. So let me do the opposite of vector B, which I know is 3 over, another 3, and up to. So this is B. Now here's an interesting part. I went 6 over and 2 up. So do the opposite. If I went 6 to the right and up 2, go 6 to the left and down 2 and that will get you the opposite. So this is the opposite of B, for example. Now, I know I don't ask you to do B, but that's an example of how to do it. So you can always do it that way. If you know something is like, if I was doing C, and it goes over 2 and up 13, so I go right 2 and up 13, I'm going to go left 2 and down 13, and so forth and so on. So when we subtract graphically, we really are adding, in this case, F, and we're adding to it the opposite of H. That's the way I would look at this. So if I start by doing F, let's see, vector F is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8. That's the 8 and 4 one. So it goes, that one I draw normally, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So F looks like this. There's F. But now I'm going to use tip to tail. Starting there, I'm going to draw the opposite of H. So H is left 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, left 5, down 2. So H is left 5, down 2. Or if you'd like, negative 5, negative 2, right? Because that's how you would do that in a coordinate system. That means the opposite of H, can you see that? Sorry. Is going to be right 5 and up 2, or positive 5, positive 2. So from here, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
and up to, and I'm going to go to this way. So this is the opposite of h. And so by doing that, I've subtracted the two vac vectors. Now, what's my actual answer? Well, it's this one. It's right here. This right here is f minus h. Okay, I went f normally, and then they went opposite of h. And when I was got to that point, that is my end. That's my vector from here to here. All right. I'm going to pause here, and we'll do a vector thing part two, because otherwise this gets a little too long.